Hello again. So we've had some questions on Grindle worms. Um, so I figured I'd put a video together showing how to do a quick culture of gr Grindle worms. Um, first we use soil. I'll put a picture of the soil that I use. It's a good quality topsoil with some peat moss in it, so it's a nice dark color. Has some organic matter in it, so the worms like that. Um, I like using some needle point. This is kind of a small piece. It's all I had left because I have other cultures that I have going. But I use this to actually feed the fish from. So it'll sit on top of the culture. The worms will crawl through it, and then you take this out. You can dip it in water. The worms will fall off, and then you can sort them and put them in your tank, or just dip it straight in your tank if you don't mind a little dirt in there. So there's that. And then we've got our lid with the sponge um, cut a little hole insert your sponge this keeps extra bugs out gnats out things like that because um, this does sit at room temperature in your fish room under your tank wherever you kind of want to keep it um, so we've got that we've got our i have a pug and a little rat terrier so i've got some small breed food that's been soaking in water to make it soft dechlorinated water in our spray bottle um, our culture that we're going to use um, this would be our starter culture. I already have it cut open here and I dump it and then a spoon um, So what we want to first start with is getting our culture a little damp. So You don't want it soaking wet. You just want it kind of damp to the touch almost so You don't want to drown the worms out, but you don't want them to be too dry. So we'll just kind of wet this down Good mix kind of crushed up these bigger pieces I've had a lot of questions lately from people about culturing Grendel worms, um, saying that there's mold on the food when they first put the food in or that they sterilize their soil. I don't sterilize my soil because I use a good quality topsoil. Um, I haven't had any issues with bugs. I know some people say they get issues with gnats and things, but I've never had that problem. Um, maybe it's the soil I use or the way I keep my soil. I just roll my bags up. I keep them in um, a storage area so they're not exposed to being out. Sorry about that. I had a little malfunction with the camera. Um, they're not exposed to being outside. I want to say this is probably wet enough. So you want to be able to clump it, but you don't want it to be dripping. So that is about perfect because it's like a thick mud almost with no water dripping. So, all right, so we go there and then we're just going to take our culture. And you can see there's little worms crawling around. You want to use all the soil that comes in the culture because it does contain eggs and you want those to, to hatch up. So, there's going to be some little crawlies in there too. And you can see how tiny these things are. That's probably an adult right there. So it's about probably a half inch or so. These work great for um, quarries, any type of fish really, because um, it's small enough for everybody to eat, but not quite too big. Um, I do feed these to baby quarries as well that I'm growing out that are probably know, a couple, three, four weeks old. Um, they'll start to munch them and it almost looks like it's going to be impossible for them to eat them but they get them down. So I'm going to spread this around a little bit. Alright, and then we'll take a little bit of the dog food. You don't want to do too much at first because that's when you tend to get the mold. So people have been asking about getting mold on their cultures. It's usually before the culture starts to take off and the food sits there for too long. And then I just give it another little spritz. And then we take our little needle point, put it over that. And that is it. And then you just want to check this thing, put it someplace out of the way. Just want to check it like every day, every other day, make sure that they're doing okay, that the food's okay. But I brought a couple bigger cultures that I have here. So this is one that's been going for oh probably two weeks now um, I started it with the same amount 
you can see that the worms are all over the place. They kind of huddle around the food. So you want to scatter your food out that way they cover the soil. This one had a little bit of moss growing in it because I do use some with organic matter. But there was a spot over here you can see where we're still getting some mold on the food and that's because the worms aren't getting to it fast enough. So you just go and pick that piece out. It's gonna be covering worms, so if you wanna save the worms, you can. I'm just gonna throw it in with the dog food. And then just throw some new food in there. But that's a, about a two week old culture or so. And then here's another one. And I use some bigger containers because I have a lot of fish. And this one here, this one's a couple months old. And it, they start to get boom and the worms are crawling the sides. You can just take your needle point out here. And I can feel worms everywhere. But you can see it's kind of fuzzy and wiggling. Just tons of them. And I'll take this and I'll dip this in like a bowl of dechlorinated water or tank water. And you'll get like thousands of worms off of something like this. And I just fed this one last night. So you can see that there's still quite a bit of dog food in here. But this will probably be gone maybe tomorrow or the next day because there's a pretty good population going. So I start these at different stages. That way I've always got one working that's good. And um, when you get a culture, you don't want to put it all in one little container like this. I was just doing this as an example. I would do two or three containers and kind of break your culture up into small segments. That way you have multiple cultures going at the same time, just in case something happens to one. I've never had a culture crash, but I've heard of people who have, and you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, or all your worms in one bucket. Um, this helps protect you a little bit. So if you can't do something this big, and you can do something like this, this is perfectly fine. You'll get tons of worms from it. Um, and as you feed, it's gonna deplete your population, and then you'll have your new stuff coming up all the time. So. But anyway, um, hopefully you liked the video. If you have questions, make sure to ask. Um, check out the website, gillsandfins.us. Um, we do sell cultures there of these micro worms, vinegar eels, and then I've got a lot of white worms working, but I'm not to the point where we're putting those on yet. Um, anyway, click subscribe, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks.